the most common way for removing particles such as dust or dirt or water droplets from a certain substance is using a filter. So you take your substance, which could be a gas or a, a liquid, you run it through your filter, all of the particles that you don't want are simply left behind in that filter and you have a clean substance on the other end. The problem with this method is that you have to take your filter out every once in a while to clean it or even replace the filter altogether, which costs money and time. And of course, time is also money in the industrial world. Luckily, there is another method for removing particles from a substance, uh, and it's called cyclonic separation. In order to understand cyclonic separation, we first have to understand some basic physics behind objects moving in circles. You see, an object that is moving around a central point in a circle is a very curious thing. And the reason it's a curious thing is because it's constantly changing direction. An object that is moving in a circle is constantly curving round, it's constantly cornering basically, so it's constantly changing direction. And according to Newton's first law, an object can only change direction if some force is applied to it. Which means that when an object is moving in a circular trajectory, there must be a constant force that is applied to it all the time. And that force is called the centripetal force, and it points right to the center of the circle that the object is following. This centripetal force can be caused by basically anything that can apply some force. So for example, if this is a, an object attached to a rope that I'm spinning round with my hand, the rope is applying the centripetal force. If this is a satellite rotating round a planet, then it's the gravity of the planet acting as the centripetal force. The amount of centripetal force that is required to keep an object in a certain trajectory can be calculated using this formula. But it gets even more interesting if we rewrite this formula to this form, because now we can use it to calculate the radius of a circle that an object will follow. And what this tells us is that apparently if an object's mass, which is what we're interested in today, increases, since mass is above the division line, if the mass increases, it also increases the radius of the circle. If I have a rubber band with an object attached to it, a light object, and I spin it round, the light object will follow a small circle round my hand. If I then replace that with a larger object that is heavier and I spin it round, the rubber band will stretch out further and it will follow a larger trajectory, it will have a bigger radius. It makes complete sense. And this is what the cyclonic separation system is based on. So now let's take a look at what a cyclonic separator looks like. This is my schematic drawing of a cyclonic separator. Basically what it is, is it's a cylinder and in that cylinder is a bit of pipe that is sticking down into it, which I call the exit pipe. And then there is also another input pipe at the, at the top of this cylinder. So this is where our mixture of gas and particles, or, or maybe water and particles, this is where some, some stuff comes in that we want to separate. At the bottom is also a hole, uh, which we're going to discuss later on. This is for collecting collecting the particles essentially. So what happens when you turn on this cyclonic separator is you start sucking air or water from the exit pipe. So the exit pipe is connected to some sort of fan or pump and it starts sucking air out of the cyclonic separator. Let's just talk about a cyclonic separator that separates dust from air in this case. Right? Something you might use in a vacuum cleaner. So this air gets sucked out of the cyclonic separator and that causes a vacuum inside the cyclonic separator. Well, of course, not a complete vacuum, but it causes lower air pressure inside the separator than outside the separator. And of course, since air always moves from high pressure to low pressure regions, the air from outside, which is mixed with dust in this case, will start moving into the cyclonic separator through that input pipe. And now, 
And now we switch over to the top down view that I've made, which looks like this. The air rushes into the cyclonic separator at high speed, and then something interesting happens. You see, we are sucking out the air from the centre of that cyclonic separator, which means in the centre of the separator there is going to be a very low air pressure region. The air pressure in the centre of the separator will be lower than the pressure on the outsides of the separator, which means the air that is just going into it will really want to go towards the centre, like this. Hold on a second, that's a centripetal force, isn't it? Yes, that's right, it is. There is now a centripetal force that is caused by a pressure difference between the centre of the separator and the outside of the separator, which causes the air that moved in at a high velocity to bend towards the left and start rotating round in a circle inside the cyclonic separator. So what we've got now is a vortex. Now let's see what happens when these dust particles that we want to filter out, that we want to separate from the air, what happens to them when they enter the cyclonic separator. So we have a dust particle, and the dust particle goes into the cyclonic separator at the same speed, the same velocity as all the gas molecules around him, and the, the particle moves into this system, and it also experiences that centripetal force. But there is one difference, one critical difference, between the particle of dust and the gas molecules that are in that separator as well. The particle of dust is way heavier than these gas molecules. Of course, a dust particle is a tiny thing to us, but compared to an, a gas molecule, it's a massive thing. If we take a look at the formula, we can see that if we have the same centripetal force, but an increased mass, remember, with the rubber band, the circular trajectory becomes larger, the radius increases. And that's exactly what happens here. That particle is way heavier than those gas molecules, but it experiences the same centripetal force, which means it's going to follow a much larger circular trajectory, and that means this will happen. It'll simply crash into the wall of that cyclonic separator, after which it will then fall down into that other hole we just discussed, and that hole is often connected to some sort of dust container which it will drop into. And that's essentially how it works. We're separating heavier from lighter particles. In this case, we're separating dust particles from gas molecules, and this can be used in many different situations. It's used a lot in industrial processes, such as filtering out particles, well, we're not filtering, of course, but separating particles from gas in, in large, long gas pipelines, which is often contaminated with, with stuff. Uh, but we also use it in vacuum cleaners. There are a lot of vacuum cleaners these days that use cyclonic separation instead of some dust bag filtering system. Actually, I've made one of these things myself for a little side project. Uh, and it shows that it's pretty easy to construct one, uh, which is also why they're so popular. They're very cheap to build, they're not very complex devices that, that are very expensive. You can literally make them of cardboard. That's what makes this technology so interesting. Well anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.